Hi, this is Kevin with Advanced Leather Solution. With me here today is Jason Murray. He is our senior technician. Jason is going to be demonstrated how, demonstrating how we do the color effect on a uh, piece of leather that has had the print coat taken off as a result of either uh, wear or some kind of chemistry that may have hit it. And so, uh, Jason, why don't you take it away? Well, to make this easier to work on, we're going to... Uh, normally, a customer would have their course, but uh, this was sent to us, so we're going to put some foam inside here to give something to work against. It's better to work against the taut, flat surface. One of the problems with working on a casing is that it will want to have these folds in it without the uh, core inside. And if you're doing spraying um, and you have these folds in it, what will happen is it will concentrate on the face and there will be none behind. So then when you pull it taut, there will be this demarcation right there, aligned. Makes so sense. we want this uh, as flat as we can get it. Working on the top of an arm, of course, we don't have to be concerned about that. True. And so the first step is to prime the area with the included primer. And you want to apply primer to every area that's going to have color applied to it. So side to side, all the way across. A decent wet coat should be one coat should be sufficient. Now, if you're going to let this air dry, it'd take about maybe 10 minutes, depending on uh, temperature and humidity. It's helpful to have a hair dryer to speed up this process because it takes multiple coats with the airbrush to cover. I see. And so, if you can dry each coat after it's applied, the process will go much quicker. And with this gun, this little badger. You can control your um, the droplet size of the spray by either this this threads, and by threading up, the droplets become finer, and by threading down, they become bigger. Okay. And so I would uh, have like a paper towel or something where you can test and see what your pattern is like. Droplet size will also be controlled by air pressure. The higher the air pressure, the finer the mist. Okay. And basically what we're doing here, the print has been removed pretty pretty evenly. So we're just going to put down layers of print to darken it in. It doesn't have to be uniform because this leather isn't uniform anyway. So it's just a metal. I, I do circular patterns. A little bit at a time, drying as we go to darken that in. And as you can see, bit by bit, it's darkening. Now, on this casing in particular, you can see these side panels, which have been completely unaffected, are significantly darker than the uh, top panel. Yes, I see where that. Where the print's been. Now, you can either choose to match to the top panel section, so yes. darken it uh, moderately, or you can choose to go all the way back to the original, um, significantly darker. And it's just uh, additional coats of, uh, of print. will take you there. You can go this dark or you can just blend it to the surrounding area. Which makes more sense. It's certainly easier to blend it to the surrounding area than try to bring everything back to the original. Less time consuming but we want to provide all options. I if think. you are dealing with a particular spot, like a small spot, I don't know if the camera will pick up some of these these areas oh, see that. that are very defined, right. there's a different way that you can uh, blend those in. Put this at an angle. And that can be done with just a fine tip. Um, yes. Touch up brush. Yes. And then I'm just taking the same print that was in the airbrush and uh, my heat gun slash hair dryer, whatever is available. 
and then you just point in that area. You can blot it a little bit with your finger so that you don't have a real heavy concentration. And just control exactly where that color goes. Because if we were using an airbrush to do this, the spray pattern would be larger than the damage that we're trying to uh, to take care of. Makes a lot of sense. And uh, so the light area and the surrounding dark dark area would darken at the same rate. This way, we can control exactly where the color goes. Now, this is time consuming, but it's going to give the best result. And then once we've taken it to this way, where the formerly light area is now of a similar darkness as the surrounding, then we could use the airbrush to darken the, the whole entire area. area. I understand. And so those are basically the two strategies for 